We are back for another topic in Ace Marine. This is all dealing with topic two, which is earth processes. Just like before in my previous videos, I do want to remind you to take out your Cambridge syllabus for Ace Marine. Go to page 16. Look at the learning goals for topic two, which is earth processes. You are expected to know the overall learning goal of knowing how the plates move, knowing what forms because of the movement of plates. And we're going to get into those details in just a moment. But what I want you to first think about is the evidence of plate tectonics. The biggest piece of evidence that you need to know is paleomagnetic stripes. That is actually striping along the sea floor, and that's going to prove that the plates move in certain directions. We'll go over those directions in a moment, but I want you to think of magnetic. What are, why are we talking about a magnetic stripe? Because every time the plates move, it's changing the magnetic field on Earth. So just think like a magnet, North and South Pole, it's going to shift on Earth very slightly every time those plates move. So that's the first piece of evidence. Then, of course, we have plate boundaries. Plate boundaries, we're talking about convergent, divergent, transform boundaries. These boundaries allow for those paleomagnetic stripes to form. So I'm going back and forth because I want you to remember every time a plate shifts in a certain direction, whether it's convergent, divergent, or transform, it's going to shift the magnetism on Earth, and we'll actually see this striping on the bottom of the seafloor. Now, convergent, I want you to think come together, right? Convergent, come together. Divergent, think when you're diving off of a diving board, you're diving away. So divergent, two plates moving away from each other. And then transform, transform, they're literally gliding in anti-parallel directions, or you can say they're moving in opposite directions, but we like to say anti-parallel because they're going in opposite directions. One is shifting up, the other is shifting down. Down. One could be shifting left, the other one is shifting right. So what forms at a convergent boundary? Mountain ranges, think anytime two plates come together, what could be happening? Well, two plates could pile on top of each other, causing mountain ranges. We could also see volcanoes, and this is because of something called a subduction zone. That's literally when one plate slides under the other, and this is going to cause a puncture in the mantle, allowing for the mantle to release magma from a volcano. So convergent boundary, two plates coming together. I gave you two primarily land examples. Um, so you have to remember when you see mountain ranges, yes, we can see them in the ocean, but I'm giving you two land examples. Then we talk about divergent boundaries. Our favorite for Ace Marine is going to be mid-ocean ridges. So that's where two plates are moving away from each other, and we have mid-ocean ridges form. Now with a mid-ocean ridge, it's kind of like a mountain range, but think of like the Grand Canyon, right? There's like these valleys, and then there's these big piles piles of rocks and then very flat area after. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and Google it so that you can actually see what a central valley, the mid-ocean ridges, and then that flat abyssal plain looks like around a mid-ocean ridge. And then transform boundaries, they're typically going to cause earthquakes. Um, and these earthquakes are basically when it's a rattle on Earth because when two plates are going in opposite directions or anti-parallel, they're going to get stuck on one another. It's not a perfect fit. And when they get stuck, it builds up pressure as they're trying to push against each other. Once that pressure is released, that means the plates have finally broken away and now they're moving in opposite directions directions, causing an earthquake. Okay. Divergent boundaries, back to those mid-ocean ridges. Whenever we think about a divergent boundary, I want you to think diving away from a diving board, right? So you're going away. So the two plates are moving away from each other. Whenever we think about a mid-ocean ridge, we also have to think about a hydrothermal vent. It's expected that you'll know how to explain a hydrothermal vent. A hydrothermal vent is water being released from a vent. So it's sort of like an underwater volcano, except it's not releasing any magma from inside of Earth. Instead, it can be found on the seafloor around mid-ocean ridges, and it's when cold 
very nutrient rich water actually seeps into the cracks in the bottom of the sea floor. And these cracks are also called fissures. It's like a little break. That cold water seeps into the mantle, which is inside of earth and it's very hot. So the cold water is going to superheat, get very hot, very quickly. When it's inside of the mantle, that water is also, since it's so hot, going to dissolve minerals, minerals that are needed here on Earth. But because of a hydrothermal vent, that water is dissolving those minerals. And once the steam builds up, pressure builds, and the water with those minerals will precipitate out like steam. And it creates like a plume, kind of like a smoky plume, but it's really just steam. It's water and minerals. And it goes through this chimney-like structure called a hydrothermal vent. Finally, what's going to happen is, remember, the deep ocean is cold, so the water, the steam that's coming out of this hydrothermal vent will cool and it will settle, forming this hydrothermal vent structure, and it kind of looks like a chimney. Now, where are hydrothermal vents? They're in the deep ocean. They are going to be detected by many organisms miles away. So these plumes, this hot water around the vent changes the solubility of salt. So that means how well sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and calcium carbonate dissolve around these hydrothermal vents. And these plumes, like I just said, can be detected from miles away, which is so important for life in the deep ocean because they need sodium chloride. They need magnesium sulfate. They need calcium carbonate and other organic material that's around these hydrothermal vents. Final thing on the hydrothermal vents is the abyssal plane. So just like we said, we know that our mid-ocean ridges form a divergent boundaries. We have our central rift valley, and then we have this mountain-like structure. Now, after that mountain-like structure, it's very flat. So from the mid-ocean ridge all the way to land, it's called the abyssal plane. The abyssal plane is actually formed because of upwelling. But what is left behind are kind of like just sediment and new, new crust that is allowing for a flat area. So we have these stacks of rock, sand, and other minerals that have settled at the bottom. And from our mid-ocean ridge, all the way to land will be called an abyssal plane. Liked this video, go ahead and like it. And of course, subscribe so you can continue to stay on top of Ace Marine.